and welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, hello, my name is Skylar. I am a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. And for the sake of today's video, I'm also a tattoo collector. Obviously here on YouTube, I go by the tattooed dog trainer and I'm also not the most visibly tattooed person in the world. And I totally get it. I do get the occasional comment or question of why I call myself that if I seemingly don't have very many tattoos. And to be totally honest, in the grand scheme of things, I don't have a large portion of my body covered. I have maybe 12 or 13 tattoos. You'll occasionally see in videos my two little shoulder caps, but other than that, I don't look tattooed whatsoever. Um, I do have a handful of tattoos and I figured showing you guys those that you don't get to see on camera all the time could be a fun way to kind of understand that aspect of me. Dogs and tattoos are kind of my big two hobbies and interests. So it's really exciting for me to share those with you guys today. Now also seemed like the absolute perfect time for this video because I do have two or three new tattoos coming up in the next month. In fact, by the time you're watching this video, I'm already gonna be having another tattoo on my body and healing. So it just seems like now's a good time to get you guys all caught up on the tattoos that I already have. So that way as I continue to collect more and more, we're kind of all on the same page. For this video, I'm going to do my best to go in chronological order, and I'll obviously talk about kind of the artist, the inspiration behind the tattoo, and whatever meaning that it has, or the story behind it. As far as, like, price and pain and all of that stuff, I'm gonna leave out of this video, otherwise it's gonna get pretty long, but if you would like me to answer any of those questions about my tattoos in the future, definitely let me know. I'm totally open to doing as much or as little tattoo content as you guys want to see. So if you want to see more, definitely make sure to like this video and leave a comment below to let me know that. So let's go ahead and get on with the video. So my absolute very first tattoo was the tree stump down at the bottom of my ankle. This one I got like two weeks after my 18th birthday and I was super, super excited. It was my first time going to the shop that I got most of my tattoos from. The tattoo itself was done by Max VK at Northwest Tattoo in Eugene, Oregon. The tattoo itself was inspired by some lyrics from one of my favorite Bastille songs. It's called Laughter Lines, and I'll go ahead and throw those lyrics up on screen. At the time of me getting the tattoo, the lyrics had a little bit of a different meaning to me than they do now, and I'm really proud of kind of the way that that's changed for me. It's also partially inspired by the giving tree, which I feel like those two things kind of go hand in hand. My next tattoo was the hand holding a planchette. That was done by Sarah Knapp. I originally got it done at Northwest Tattoo in Eugene. She recently just opened her very own shop that I'm going to for the first time in a week um, called Wild Rose in Eugene. So I'm very, very excited for her and I'm very excited to go check it out. This tattoo was actually part of a coloring sheet set that she'd released for Friday the 13th. For those of you who don't know, oftentimes for Friday the 13th, there's like tattoo deals that incorporate a spooky theme or the number 13. She decided to not go the traditional flash route and just did coloring pages, but she posted them and I really, really liked this design. I have always loved Halloween and spooky things, so I really was drawn to this tattoo design. After that, I got my self-love tattoo. It's a little conversation heart. I got it a couple days before Valentine's Day after like my first breakup. Overall, the tattoo hasn't healed the best. I did get the flu immediately after getting this tattoo. I got it after a breakup. I no longer associate it with that. In fact, I actually associate it with one of the proudest things I think I've ever done, but definitely that I've done in my high school career um, because after I got the tattoo, I was more, you know, immunocompromised and susceptible to getting the flu. I got the flu, I was couch ridden for two weeks, and then in those two weeks I was able to plan a really big thing for me, um, and that's something I'm super proud of. So that's kind of the association that I have with this tattoo. So I don't even mind that it needs a touch up and I keep putting it off because it's a little bit messed up because I got sick and because I got sick I was able to do this really really cool thing that I'm proud of. So my next tattoo I got on a trip to Hawaii. This is a Hum Hum Nuka Nuka Apua'a and I got it by Josh Flynn and he did an absolute fantastic job. He kept like having me pull up a reference on my phone so that he could get all the colors and shading right. As we go through the video you'll notice that I kind of have a lot of tattoos that I got in Hawaii or remind me of Hawaii and it's because like, I have family there that we visited often growing up. We try to go as a family 
and like my immediate family every couple of years. Um, my two sisters, myself and my dad, were all hula dancers for years and years and years. I've been dancing off and on over the last decade. It's just one of those things that's I hold really close and really near and dear. Growing up, when we would go visit, we would go to Hanama Bay and we would snorkel. And one of the things that kind of got stuck in my head as a little kid was like to follow the humu humu and they'll show you all the good spots to snorkel. I don't really know where that came from. I think I created it in my child brain. Um, but it's still something I do today. If I see a humu humu, I'm gonna follow it because it hasn't proven me wrong yet. From a respectful distance, of course. This tattoo in particular is one of my absolute favorites and I think it turned out really, really nice. It's held up really well. I've had this one for four years now-ish um, and it's, it's definitely one of my favorites. After that, so my fifth tattoo, I got the Lady Luck with a deck of cards and some dice. This one I got while I was in Vegas being a nanny while well, someone got married. So they were doing a, a Vegas wedding. She had kids. I was brought along to watch the kids while everybody else partied in Vegas, obviously. And part of my payment for that was, you know, a paid for trip to Vegas. And then she also paid for me to get this tattoo because I expressed, you know, interest in doing so. I got this tattoo done at Downtown Tattoo in Vegas. And they, if you go in the shop, I swear, please go in the shop if you're in Vegas. It's literally floor to ceiling covered in tattoo flash. Like the ceiling has frames on it covered in tattoo flash. So this was actually a flash piece that I just kind of picked off the wall and then customized a bit. Initially I think I went in there wanting a Queen of Hearts tattoo, but since I was a walk-in and it would have just been too much, I went with this and I actually really love this. It was originally a suit of aces, I changed it to queens and I put Lady Luck. Um, and it's more or less inspired and in honor of Frank Sinatra. I played in jazz band for, I don't know, five years? I played saxophone in jazz band. Um, I really love jazz music. My partner now really loves jazz music. In fact, looking right across from me over on this wall here, I have two pictures of the Rat Pack just hanging up. So this tattoo, I really like it. So next I got my knife tattoo. This one was actually the very first tattoo on my right leg. This tattoo was a piece of flash done by Alexa Brooke tattoo back when she was a tattoo apprentice. And so with that, an apprentice tattoo, they're usually still practicing. Um, but this was towards the end of her apprenticeship. And so I decided to get the tattoo in order to, you know, have a fun tattoo, um, as well as kind of help her through her tattoo journey. And this particular tattoo reminds me of Psycho, which is one of my all time favorite, favorite movies. And so it's just, you know, a fun little knife at the top of my leg. I forget about that one pretty much all the time though. Um, it's one of the ones that when I'm counting, I often forget that I have. Next, I finally finished my To Kill a Mockingbird tattoo. So this one is To Kill a Mockingbird. It was done by Sarah, who also did my little planchette tattoo. And this one took me two sessions. I was not having it the first day. I'm a very sensitive person both emotionally and pain tolerance wise and sensitive skin wise. Um, so when I get tattooed, it's my, the actual act of getting tattooed, my least favorite thing in the world. I like to put it off. I love the artwork. I'm a wimp. I'm a little baby when it comes to pain. This one took two sessions to finish. Um, it's inspired by To Kill a Mockingbird, one of my all time favorite books. I've read it multiple multiple times. So this tattoo is a mockingbird and it has some pink azaleas which are the flowers that Miss Maudie grew in her garden. This is one of my favorite tattoos just because it's done really well. It's a gorgeous tattoo and it symbolizes you know one of my absolute favorite books. So this is I love this one. This is a great one. I love all my tattoos and I can justify why each one's my favorite but I, this one's one that I look at a lot. Next is my whale tattoo. This was done by Matt Myrdal on Maui. This was during another trip to Hawaii with the family. And when I went, and we often go during you know, whale mating season, whales are often done in more traditional tattoos as well. So when you look at kind of American traditional tattoo content, you'll see a lot of things like sharks and ships and anchors, and you'll occasionally see whales. And so it's always just kind of been rattling in my head as something that I would like to get. 
um, just because it does have more of a traditional tattoo symbolism, but in the more neo-traditional style that I really, really like. And so this tattoo here, it was probably my biggest tattoo when I got it uh, compared to all the rest of them. It honestly did not hurt as much as a lot of the lower leg tattoos, so thank God for that. And after I got this tattoo, like four other people got similar tattoos from Matt, and so that was really, really cool to see that I kind of started a trend. After that whale tattoo is when I kind of started to muster up the nerve to actually migrate my tattoos to the top half of my body. I am wanting to do kind of nature Pacific Northwest inspired sleeves for my arms. And so to start that off, I got my owl tattoo. And this is one that started with absolutely no meaning and then gained kind of a lot of meaning, which is the case for a lot of my tattoos. This tattoo was done by Keisha Nicole at Monolith Tattoo in Bend, Oregon. And this one, I got a horned owl because it's native to where I live. Um, but as she was putting the stencil on and kind of figuring out color palette, she asked what I wanted to do for all of these leaves. Um, and I ended up going with like orange and red maple leaves. And that kind of started to tie in a whole like grandfather element. So as I was getting the tattoo, after I was getting the tattoo, I started to associate it with my granddad on my dad's side. Um, both my grandpa and my dad are Canadian immigrants. Um, I am a first generation American on that side of things. So having like the maple leaves obviously cliche reminds me of them. Um, and then horned owls always have reminded me of just crazy old men, which my grandpa is. So this is kind of, it's more art than anything else, but it's also kind of taken on a double meaning of reminding me of my grandpa. So that's that one. It's one of the ones that a lot of people tell me are their favorite and I get it because it turned out really really well. After that I got the other side of my arm done. This is a deer. This was done by Sarah who again also did the To Kill a Mockingbird tattoo. And all of my tattoos are kind of in the neo-traditional realm with more of like a, a feminine twist. Um, so this one is just super cute and I like him a lot and I know I decided to go with a specific flower, but to be honest, I forgot what specific flower these are. Um, I can absolutely look up because I wrote it down somewhere, but I don't have time to go rifling through pages of notes right now. So you can just appreciate it for what it is. A really nice tattoo. So my second most recent tattoo, this one I got December of 2020, and it's a little resist fist holding a daisy. This tattoo was done by Alexa and inspired by a piece of flash from Ashley Love. And this tattoo has kind of a lot of different meanings for me, I guess. I'm a very passionate person. I have a lot of things that I'm very passionate about. And while I would love to get a tattoo for every single thing that I'm passionate about, I would end up with a body completely covered in just politically charged things. So rather than doing that, um, I got a little resist fist to try to encompass all the things. This was obviously also done after the murder of George Floyd and all of the protests. And I can't take that heavy meaning away from the reason why I got this. Um, obviously, getting a tattoo is not going to solve anything, um, but you know, it's, it's one of those things to kind of remind me of the time and of my privilege and hopefully when people ask me about it I can go on a mini rant. Um, so not, not only is it inspired by that, it's inspired by all of the other things that I'm passionate about and represents all of those things, but especially after that summer um, I was rearing and ready to go. So it's one of my newer tattoos. I got that one while my sister was getting her first tattoo. She wanted a tattoo buddy. So I was like, I finally can do this. Um, so that's kind of that tattoo. And that leads me to my most recent tattoo. And that is the Honu with a hibiscus for a shell on my leg. This tattoo was done by Bouge at Mid Pacific Tattoo in Maui. And this one, my dad's very first tattoo was four honus with 
hibiscus for shells, um, and the corresponding colors for all of my siblings. And so I got this kind of in honor of that. I've associated with red with my parents because we all had colors growing up. I don't they got red. I don't know. In my mind, at least. While we were there, all of my family members got tattoos, and then me and both my sisters both got turtles. So I got this one. My sister got her very first tattoo, and she got a Honu with a hibiscus shell. Um, my other sister, who had already been tattooed once at that point, got a really big, semi-realistic turtle on her thigh, and that turned out super, super cool. Um, so it was one of those things that kind of matches my sister's reminds me of my parents, kind of matches a tattoo that my dad got in honor of us kids, um, and it just turned out really, really cool. So those are all of my tattoos as of now. Like I said, by the time you're watching this, I'm gonna have at least one more. So be sure to stay tuned. Follow me on social media. Tattoo.dogtrainer is my personal, more youtube account. That's where I'm gonna be sharing, you know, pictures of tattoos. Um, when I get tattooed, I like to do Q&As to help keep me distracted. So as I get tattooed more and more later this month, you can kind of join me on that journey. And you can also follow me on my business account that's at Top Dog Behavior for more of like the daily dog posts. If you enjoyed today's video, if you would like to see more tattoo content, if you have other questions for me regarding tattoos, leave those down in the comments below and be sure to give this video a like. I'm totally cool doing as much or as little tattoo content as you guys want to see. I obviously get a little excited about tattoos, like I said, they're my second passion, um, but I totally get that this is primarily a pet channel, and if you guys just want to see pets, I'm totally cool with that. So if you're interested, if you don't want to see any more, let me know down in the comments below, and I can kind of work that into whatever. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content. I mainly focus on pet nutrition and dog training. Um, but if you guys are interested in the tattoo stuff, I can throw that in there occasionally as well. I would also like to start every once in a while putting a more like fun personal video into the mix. Just so those of you who get to want to know me a little bit more have that opportunity. So with that, I will see you guys in my next video. And until then, bye!